I am not interested in creating clones of Dennis Parent. I want to empower people to find their own artistic voice. They form a pattern across the canvas. They lay the foundation for the painting that is to come. I look around and I make decisions about where these values fall on the canvas based on my initial drawing, my value map. This is all educated guesswork at this point. It comes from my experience and it all comes from, it also comes from my eye and training my eye to look and see carefully what I'm really seeing and it also depends on me not naming anything, any part of the painting. I'm not naming it. I'm not calling it anything in my mind. I'm simply looking and responding in a kind of intuitive way to what I'm seeing based on my understanding of these value relationships. Again, when I put the paint down, I'm doing it in a very deliberate and evenly applied way. We eventually end up with a kind of poster-like image. Patterns of shapes that lay the foundation for the final painting. I'm on to my next value now. You can see that not only is it lighter, but it's cooler. So the values also have characteristics, color, temperature characteristics as well. And these are important because, again, these patterns that create the foundation for the painting have these characteristics in them and it will help us ultimately portray or render you now look I'm slowing it down again in order for you to see that paint application making sure that it's evenly applied I go back down and get some more paint Speed things back up a little bit. Many of you have asked about paint application and brush stroke. And I wanted to use this video as an opportunity to show you the paint application. In the early stages of the painting, I'm using a big brush and I'm applying the paint very evenly, almost like house paint. I'm using a bright or a short flat. And I'm using the brush the way it was intended, almost like a house painting brush, so that I can create very even, simple strokes, flat no variation, no intended variation. And I'm looking across the entire canvas and at my subject, and I am coordinating the placement of these shapes on the canvas in order to recreate or translate would be better said what I'm seeing. I want to be thorough here. I want to make sure that I don't have to go back 
and redo or reapply an area later. So take my time, look around, look carefully at all parts of the painting and make sure I get the canvas covered with paint with this value shape. You can see the pattern beginning to emerge as we move through the various values. Again, being thorough about where the values fall and letting that final image of the painting guide me through the process. We're going to move on to that final value shape, what you might call the light. At this point, our, probably our biggest task is to establish what areas of the canvas belong to the light and which areas belong to shadow. And you can see I'm bringing in the light at this point. Again, no variation. Just putting it down evenly as best I can to approximate what I'm seeing from the subject. Establishing this overall grand relationship between the light and the shadow. Once we have this in place, we are way ahead of the game. Way ahead of the game. As you can see, I'm generalizing. I know that down the road there will be many variations within these shapes. But what I'm looking for right now is the biggest, simplest, most general shapes that I can detect and discern. I'm really closing in now on what I call the covered canvas. First big stage after the drawing and value map is established. It's getting the canvas covered in paint. And once that canvas is covered in paint and all the shapes relate to one another, then I'm able to step into the painting. Ultimately, this is the result. But without this, without the value shapes to begin with, that painting will never come about.